Hello and welcome to Eat Your Backyard, my YouTube channel. I've been doing this for about 10 years now, sharing my tropical backyard, subtropical backyard development with you. And it's gone through a lot of changes over the years. Thanks for tuning in to Eat Your Backyard. We try to do these every Sunday. Today we were a bit delayed. We had some storms going through this morning and my the arrival of my coffee was not as planned, but now got the coffee. Iced coffee this morning. Iced coffee is a good pick because it is starting to get hot. With the clouds overhead, it wasn't that bad this morning, but now starting to feel it. The good thing is there's a nice little breeze. Now, if you're not subscribed already, please subscribe also. Please hit that thumbs up button if you like this kind of stuff. Helps me in the YouTube Google algorithm. Also, give it a thumbs up and give it a comment. Tell me what you're thinking, what you're doing. Um, that makes it really interesting for me. All right. Well, I can't help but think this time of the year, September wrapping up, that hurricane season is upon us, like the real hurricane season. What I mean is when the activity almost always bumps up and we get some in the area, or at least out in the ocean, the Atlantic Ocean. And if you are living in Florida, you might already know that there are a couple of systems in the general area, one more or less below us and one coming out through the center of the ocean that we'll want to keep an eye on. But the sheer destructive force of a hurricane always makes me consider, what have I done? What have I done? One of the things I've done is uh, produced this kind of shape in a tree, which is, it's amazing. This is a Hayden mango tree, which is, a, I'm, I'm sure you know, the king of mangoes, one of the ultimate. Although some people would complain about its fibrous fruit the flavor is one of the best. But I've allowed this thing over the years, and I've trimmed it back many times, but to achieve this state, which is, by the way, just gigantua, level five, huge, dominating this backyard. It's kind of hard to see how much of the yard it dominates when you're down here on the ground level, but if you look at the video I recently released showing the overhead perspective, I did kind of an overhead tour of the yard and talked about sort of a retrospective on where we're at in the backyard with the food forest systems. And I realized by looking straight down from the drone that this thing is dominating, it almost looks like 50% of my yard. It's so it's monopolizing 50% of the sun as well as a result and limiting greatly what's going on down here. It's created a very shady area, which is it's actually, we go in there and hang out all the time, so it's really functional. But the other thing is that it is, it was one of the very first things I planted because I wanted a mango tree so badly in the backyard. It was just a little tiny thing, no bigger than your pinky, the trunk when I got it. Now, I mean, it's easily two feet wide trunk, if not bigger. And unfortunately, when I was little, I didn't realize, oh, Having this power line so close, look at that. This is one of the banes of my existence here is this 220 line. And I've kept it trimmed back over the years, but as it gets bigger, that becomes more and more risky. Uh, so I do have a, a trimming of it planned, but the optimal time to trim it would be right after it fruits. And that's a good practice for mango trimming in general. First of all, trim it like a fruit orchard tree so you don't have the fruit up so high. Keep a lot of branches down low, remove significant woody areas if you can. But after it fruits, it'll, it'll almost every single time have a vigorous, vigorous growth spurt that happens. And you wanna ride that, that energy of the tree, which is for this tree likely around April, the end of April, maybe a little after. But uh, yeah, once we get all the fruit off, then you trim it, is the general, the general idea. But in order to do that, 
for this tree, I'm gonna have to wait until the other side of hurricane season, real hurricane season. I'm a little bit worried. So we're actually gonna call, see if we can't get it moved up. But I'm talking about doing something very radical with this mango tree, and that is to hat rack it, which is kind of a brutal practice of just removing all the vegetation from the top. So I'm, I'm thinking about that. I'm gonna do a video about the decisions here, but making decisions with larger trees you love, it's not so easily done, I would say. I consider these things quite a bit. I and mean, you probably do too. You become somewhat attached to the trees and of course you don't want to lose the the tree, the fruiting for too long. All right, let's uh, get to one of the subjects of the video here, which is chocolate pudding fruit. And this tree right here, this one, is a black sapote chocolate pudding tree. Now there's also a white sapote tree, which produces fruit that's similar to this, but the leaves are very, very different on the white sapote. And the leaves are one of the things I love the most about this tree. And you're going to see something on these leaves that I'm not sure if you uh, see it in your area, but here we have these little white weevils that eat on the leaves all the time. And you can see the, that kind of pattern. You could never if you set it as a life goal, you could never eliminate all those bugs without damming the, the ground forever. So I don't, I don't try to do that. I just let it happen and the bugs come and go. I'm trying to look for one to show you. But anyway, it's a little white bug. Chickens love to eat them, though. When we find them, we always feed them to the chickens who snap them up eagerly. But this has a very glossy, semi-rigid semi leaf which is very attractive, you know, it has that shine to it. I, I just like the tree itself, among other things. Now the fruit, which I'll try to show you here. If you can see, ah, there's one in the center of the shot. The fruit are rather large. I mean, that's getting close to grapefruit size almost. And it's fairly plentiful when you do what I'm doing, which is give it lots of uh, bunny manure. You can see it has almost like a speckly kind of greenish skin. Now that fruit there is about as hard as a cannonball and would taste like eating shoe polish. But, so my point is you need to let it, let it ripen completely before you eat it and it'll get very soft. Now if you, if you chop that open now, it would have the consistency of something like a very hard under ripened apple, but once it's ripe, it'll be Actually, and it would be light, light green, almost, almost a white in there. But when it's ripe, it is a black color and it is really almost, uh, I wouldn't say it's like a pudding. It's more like a very ripe avocado and it actually has more of a vegetable flavor to it like that. So this tree has been here for way over 10 years and has gone through many storms. And it's now at the point where I'm giving it everything it needs, which is lots of vermiculture, permaculture, you know, bunny manure all the time, worm castings, micronutrients, all, all of it happening on this tree, which has resulted in it really just raining chocolate pudding fruit down, which I really like, even though it's not something I would have called a fruit if it hadn't already been called a fruit. But look at how many there are. There's a couple more, and then if you look up, there's just clusters of them. and produces a nice shade. It's easy to manage the size of it. So this is one of my all-time favorites without any doubt. You can see we had a big cut I took out of it not that long ago, which seems to be healing up just fine. I love the bark on this too. It's a very dark wood look. Really cool. So yeah, I'd, I always recommend that one. Here's another thing you should know about it. It's very easy to grow from a seed. You just have to get the seeds, and I say this for most seeds. You should try to get the seeds off fully ripened fruit. Like almost, it'd be almost better if the, root, the fruit was overripe. and starting to turn. And then you know the seed was done growing, has everything that that plant needed to put in that seed, or could put in that seed was in there. So I think you increase the viability of seeds that way. Especially in fruit trees, if you can plant the seeds of fruit trees fresh, a lot of the times that's the best way to do it. Sometimes you just plant it right in the rotten fruit itself. I do that with mangoes all the time. I'll show you an example of this. By the way, I'm going to give you a tip here in just a minute about 
things you can do for your yard, uh, your lawn, if you have spotty grass this time of year or any time of year. But look at that. That is a Hayden mango tree growing out of my compost bin from a rotten mango I threw in there. So it happens all the time. There's another one. Uh, there's another one. So I have too many rotten mangoes, but who can handle them all? So many. And when they start coming in, you are filling five gallon buckets with mangoes very quickly. Which is why you gotta have a system to deal with them, not lose them. I think the best system is potentially a drying of the mangoes. That's what I do. I bought a dryer, uh, dehydrator. I'm gonna put down my coffee here in a second. I really got quite the sophisticated setup this morning. I hope you are enjoying it. <laughs> it is the, uh, I'm using the Rode wireless microphone, which should be producing very clear audio, at least the little thing says it is. I'm using a DG, DJI gimbal as well, which is why you don't see the shakiness. All right, let's see. What do we have here? Focus. Yeah, that's a Suriname cherry. One of my favorites. And I'm actually fasting this morning, so I'm contemplating whether I should eat it. Because once I get my metabolism going, I start getting hungry, and then I've got to feel that for the rest of the day. So the caffeine, by the way, in the, in the coffee is a great appetite suppressant. You're going to drink the coffee anyway, but I have a cup of black coffee on an empty stomach. Well, with, I have a couple glasses of water in the morning, and then I'll have a cup of black coffee. I just drink black coffee. I find that to be excellent. Way to start the day for me. I'm not saying you should do it, but that's how I do it. But look at the beauty of that thing. That is so cool. I mean, just the fact that you can produce that in your yard. This is one of the uh, another easy thing to grow. I couldn't. Easy to grow. And that pit will grow, just like I said, from the fully ripened fruit very easily. How do I know? We get hundreds of them here every year and uh, you could find them right now the cherry trees this is a perfectly viable little cherry tree that'll do great uh, if you planted it in a pot and grew it it would grow into the the tree you see above me the miniature little tree and th there's another reason these are great is that it's small and and you can tree form it to some extent you know I've tree formed this one I actually recently did a video where I showed how I opened up this corridor of light wider again, which is a big part of doing food forests in a small area, which is to keep the light management in check. Provide enough light, you know, like this thing's a light stealer. We're just managing light, it's just dominating. But when I top it and it just starts growing up from one little bush, now everything else is gonna get light. It also opens up places I can plant more stuff. So I don't just want an only mango yard. But having smaller options, having things you can tree form, having thing that things that respond well to trimming, I, I always think are important. This is, a, like I said, that's the Suriname cherry. That's a red Suriname. You can also get a black Suriname cherry. Uh, they're prolific in Southern Florida, certainly almost looked at as a weed, as an invasive. Here in Central Florida, uh, it's not looked at that way. They looked at a, like a great fruit tree. This is a Barbados cherry, which is another amazing cherry tree so a couple cherry trees cherry trees right next to each other and then next to it is the edward mango but the other thing i wanted to show you briefly was just to give you an update on this which is in addition to a fig experience i tried uh, okay let's talk philosophy and what I mean is the philosophy of how you get things to grow in challenging environments. And like your environment's challenging in some way, there are stressors on it. I have my set of stressors that, that we deal with here, primarily salt, sometimes wind, extreme heat, which can be you know really a factor with the, the water. It can get very, very dry here. And so what I do to overcome that, one of the prime ways I do 
what I do to overcome that is to just copy nature. And what does nature do? It doesn't just have one seed in the fruit typically, or one fruit rather. It'll have hundreds of seeds or hundreds of fruit with one seed or whatever, but it will have a lot of seeds and a lot of chances to win. So I use the many chances to win philosophy. And uh, I know things may do well in one little micro area of my yard and do horribly in other areas for lots of factors I don't control, like bugs, like something that was in the soil, like whatever it is. And if I simply plant things all over as I d decide I want to expand a thing, yes, there'll be some fatality, there'll be some loss, but some will make it. Now this one, I didn't put high, high marks on it making it. I didn't put high probability this would make it. What I expanded was my fig collection. I have brown turkey figs. I've had them for quite some time. They're great, by the way, great fig choice for Florida, along with others. But this one is a generic, is a, yeah, generic fig. That's how you pronounce it, but it's known to produce gigantic figs. So I, I just can't wait. And it, it didn't do much at first, and I never expect my fig trees to do much at first. They're very much a root tree. I mean, they're going to throw, it's a relative of, of the ficus. They're going to throw out long roots in many directions. So I always expect that to occur and that when it has the root structure capable of sustaining growth, then it will shoot up. And I'm always looking. And in, in that process, it'll just grow little, grow little, grow little. And then I've noticed all of a sudden you'll just see it really stretching out. And this one recently really started to stretch out. This was from its previous growth as it was slow. And then you can see how tight the, the leaves are. And then it just spaces out. You see that? And now it looks almost like it might be slowing down, but I don't know. And call me corny, but I always blow on this thing. It can't hurt it, by the way. <laughs> and it only can help it. But uh, I do think that, yeah, CO2 you know, increases plant growth. So it's a fact, Jack. But anyhow, so um, it's, it's doing it. It's doing it. And this one here, it will be fine because it still has canopy spacing to get, that it can get through an opening in the canopy that it can get through. All right. And let's look at another attempt at growing a fig tree. Uh, yeah. This one was a Olympic fig, I think. No, it's a Celeste. No, it was a white Mar Marcel's is what it was called or something like that. But anyway, it's still alive. And how can you tell? Look at the look at the springiness of of a fig tree too. That's such a weird thing of we on big fig tree branches. My kids would always like to bounce up and down. They're really strong, but they're they're. Um, that weird property to them. I don't know what you call it, almost like rubbery. But this one is alive and it's probably just doing what it needs to do, which is build its roots up. I've been pounding it with bunny manure for a year. So it's definitely got what it's need from that respect, but it is within the target range of that salt emitting sprayer there, my irrigation system. So it's got to be able to grow through it. You can see even the, the everbearing mulberry is struggling a little bit to get through it with those yellowing. That's from the salt. See how it burns the leaves? But what I'm looking for are plants that are strong enough to grow through that and get up of the canopy, of course. But okay, so that one's still in the race, but I don't know yet, but it's not looking fantastic. They do, you know, they're deciduous, so they leave, they lose their leaves in the winter, which is in Florida, you can almost go, oh, the thing's dead, it lost its leaves. It's like, no, some trees drop their leaves in the winter. All right, this one is the Celeste. You can see it's benefiting from a lot of chop and drop back here. This is just a mishmash of everything I could get my hands on to throw back here. And once you start getting a little bit of depth and all this uh, organic material will start, start to break down. It's very rewarding. But this one is doing the thing I was talking about. It's just little spurts of growth here and there. Staying alive. It's not getting a ton of, of sunlight here being in the banana grove, but it'll do okay. And it should be, it will hopefully get up the Celeste fig big enough that it can take advantage up here of the light. But that one, you know, not, not powering for sure. So we'll see. But one is doing great. And that's why I love to plant a bunch of stuff. Same thing here, pineapple bin, bunch of stuff. You want one chance to get a pineapple? No, you want 20 chances to get a pineapple. In fact, you want 20 pineapples. 
How did I know? Uh, same thing here. This is my Cavendish Banana Grove. Lots of videos on all these topics. If you're interested, you can always go back and check those out. But, ooh, I feel a little rain coming up. We might have to retreat to the Zen Bunny Run. Oh. So many butterflies in the backyard. I guess I like to give them a... Let's see what this one is. Anybody know what that is? I don't know. We sure do have a different types of butt flittering about. Yep, it's definitely starting to rain a little bit, but that's good because this Cavendish Grove, it's, it's uh, not actually looking super good. And I think that's because of the amount of water that it's getting. It's not getting really enough. So I'm glad it's raining. All right, let's see if I can weave my way through here. I know little uh, little thumpers out for his morning. Thumper, where are you? Okay. Smart bunny. The chickens with light rain. Look at that dirty bunny. Dirty bunny's been digging. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Dirty bunny's been digging a hole out of this place. No wonder he's covered exhausted. All right, you're going back in. <laughs> oh, he is level five frisky, but he cannot be out in the rain. It's funny how quickly the rabbits get wild, meaning if it, once they're outside and digging a hole, they get like a whole different kind of, uh, kind, a whole different kind of um, attitude. Like he, he, there it is. Well, that's all right, don't be. All right, well, we might be out of the commission here shortly because, of, sorry about that. It's getting, starting to rain pretty heavily. But thanks for watching the stream. Please go check out my other YouTube channel, Jedi Jingle Maker, where I put all of my original music. I'm sure you will enjoy. Please go give that a sub. I'm trying to get up to 100 subs there. And also have Surf All Day A1A, as well as uh, Florida Fishy Finger, and One Step Zen, and once, and uh, well, anyway, lots of them. Go check them out. They're all linked on this page. Hope you enjoyed the stream. I hope you have a great day. Go ahead, get some of this stuff I talked about into your yard. And